okay so this is number three i'm going to a bit more about the deck gear and stuff so the first thing i want to show you is this little thing here okay that's actually an eight eight euro uh ab sailing donut they call it or figure of eight it's for figure eight for uh, you get them from climbing shops and so on uh, i got that off amazon it cost eight eight euro i think it was and you'll see the line comes up wraps around and goes down to the other side it's tied off on the starboard side and over there on the port side it goes through a pulley and comes back to the cockpit so i'll show you that in a minute but that's all i used for a jibing control device and it was really handy um, the way it works is it creates friction there so normally when you've got your vang on okay so if i pull the vang on it's going to hold the boom down so you 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 set the mainsail up where you want it you pull your vang on get the boom down and then once it's down i tighten up this line as much as i can on the other side it just ties off on a cleat okay and then as soon as that's tied off as tight as i can you let go of the vang all right and so if the boom is out the other side um, when it's on the other side uh, the, the sail wants to lift normally and it's locked in position okay and if you're going to in a jiving situation once the sail starts to back wind all right the pressure will come off and the wind hits the sail on the other side and it starts to move across as it's moving across the the pressure in the sail wants to make the boom lift and as soon as it tries to lift it jams the, the rope this rope becomes super tight and stops it moving so it'll stop it halfway and uh, then if it's an involuntary jibe by the time the boat comes back around the other way the sail the wind hits the sail on the other side the pressure comes off the boom it drops down a little bit so this line loosens off a bit and it just slides across and then it locks up if you're actually wanting to jibe in heavy weather uh, you can actually do all this and it stops it slamming and and overloading the gooseneck and all those sorts of things so it's a boom break but all it is for a boat this size is a, a climbing donut so it costs you nothing you know it's not a big deal and uh, it, it works well as a boom break um, so that's that one now here uh, this is the system I've got here. I don't know whether you can see all these uh, Just drive it down. Okay, so I've got a series of cam cleats here. I've got uh, two speed winch here uh, A Barton two speed winch two jammers and another set here. These are my reefing lines um, leech leech lines uh, One two and three different colors and that's the vang there. Okay, this is my main halyard here and this is my uh, jib sheet okay, so uh, you'll see it goes through to the Genoa car up there and uh, uh, the reason it's in a jammer because uh, I might be using that and I might want to use this winch for something else or you know want to put it on here or for the main halyard for reefing and so on when I'm reefing uh, there's there's in, there's marks on the on the halyard oh it's not going to show now because I'm full hoist but um, I, I put uh, big big red marks on here so I know where the first second third reef is so I can ease the main halyard let it run out close the jammer off on the mark and then I can just pull the luff down you know so I've got marks to know where each of the reef points are um, uh, this this the way I've got the jammers here this is my continuous furling line for the Jenica up the front just have one in a jammer you only need one under load and the other one you just let it feed through interestingly there are so many places to run lines I've only got one one actual guideline and that's for this line here and that's up forward to make sure my furling system for the jib the actual uh, furling drum line goes clean onto the drum the rest of it we just thread it through the handrails there and all that stuff so you don't need to put lots of guides on the on the deck um, and they just come into the jammers here uh, this one here is also if i've got a sheet or something on here i can use that as a, just to jam it off um, when it's ha when it's happening there um, so that's all cool with these cam cl clam cleats here um, it's i've got a full horn cleat here because it's best to have something as a fail safe so once they're in the jam cleat i'll put a turn on this horn cleat here to make sure it'll never slip if that slips out or does something else so um, that's to me that's that's really important you know where the where the jam cleats are um, okay so uh, now you might need to come on board jean jean and we can show you some of the other bits on the other side can you climb up okay so you can probably uh, sit down in the back corner oh okay so so when I say we've got this is this is my line here for the boom break you know for the for the figure of eight that's the cleat I'm using that's easy if I'm hoisting the the J3 the big spinnaker okay it comes out of a bag it's not on a furler and the bag is clipped to the rail up forward uh, and then I connect the halyard and this is the spinnaker halyard that I use to hoist it out of that bag I've got a tack line and this is my this is my my tack line here that's at the end of the bowsprit and you'll see 
the, you can see, oh, there's a, I leave the end of it tied part way where the bag would be. So I'd connect the tack line there, and then the sheet goes back to a block at the back of the cockpit. So I've got all three lines, the halyard, the tack line, and also the... Um, the um, the sheet all in this position here and so when I want to drop it uh, first thing I do is I get the sheet ready then I let the tack go it's still connected with the halyard and then I let the let the uh, halyard go and then I can pull it in under the boom stuff it in the cockpit and take it down below basically if you're not around the boys racing it's a pain in the ass because it all ends up here in the cockpit and then you've got to take it below uh, I do have a what's called a top-down furler for the big spinnaker um, which is because the big spinnaker has a um, has a curved luff, all right? So you can't actually put a normal torsion rope in there like you do with the J5, the, the little Jenica, that's a 90 degree asymmetric. Uh, that one's up there at the bow now, you know, you can, you've seen that. Um, so uh, for this Transat, I was thinking, oh, I would have rather had the top down on that, that uh, uh, top down furler on the, on the J3, uh, the big one, which is 120 degree asymmetric because it's easier to use, you know, and it's on a furling system, but that's another story. Anyway, so I use a different sort of jammer there for the, uh, for the tack line because when you want it to go, you just pop that and it's free to run and you can pull it back here and then you can pop the halyard, you know, let that go and just pull it all down. Chuck the halyard, if you chuck the halyard in the water, when you're doing that, there's enough friction on the, on the halyard in the water to stop it falling straight away. So you can actually pull it down yourself uh, as, it's, as it's happening. Um, the, uh, then that's everything there, it's the same, so uh, that's cool. One thing that I'll show you here, okay, so with the runners, okay, uh, this is the runner tail, and it's all pretty simple. The runner's up at the moment. The thing to remember about the runners is you don't need them when you're doing the normal working sails. So with the main sail, full main and jib, you do not need runners. The rig is designed to stay there uh, normally, so you can leave them down, get them out of the way, because the main won't pass over with, he with these runners on, obviously. But when you're into the second reef, once you've got your second reef in, the main will actually tack or jibe under the runners so you can pull both of them on if you're in a storm just to support the mast even more so these are an extra when you're running the uh, the spinnakers you can actually run the j5 that's the smallest 90 degree asymmetric spinnaker without the runners if you want it's not needed because the swept back spreaders and everything's designed for that but once you get into the big spinnaker the j3 uh, you absolutely must use the runners otherwise you'll lose your rig right so the reality is you've got runners you might as well use them when you can when it's easy just to support us boots and braces sort of thing so so uh, that's what i do you know as soon as i get a two reefs in the main i've got both runners on uh, i use the runners for both spinnakers you know when they're on and even in heavy weather with with the reefs in the main i'll you know with one reef in the main i'll still possibly even pull the windward runner on you know just to give it a bit extra support so how's it all work there's a couple of considerations first of all uh, i always put a half inch in once the runner's on i put a half inch in like that to make sure the jammer doesn't slip and lose the and I lose the lose the the um, the runner so it opens up I just got a is this ready to run no, I got a bit of a bit of junk here I'm just going to show you a couple of things here bit, 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 bit of, uh, you keep all this tidy in the cockpit when you're going so yeah you keep it all tidy when you're going so once I pull that off the runner's ready to go and I have tag lines but you'll notice this is my tag line before I let it go, so to pull the rudder on, that's all you do. You just pull it on like that, and it's on, and uh, that's secure. But then when the main is going across, this tag line, you don't want to get your main hooked up with it. So I have an extra long bit of shock cord there that comes off the block, the Jenica block, that's, um, that's used. And I just put a little tur turn on that, and it keeps it out of the way. So when the main jibes across, it doesn't hook up with the tag line. Now, how does the tag line work? It's, for me, it's really simple. I just undo that. When I finish with the runner, I just let that off there, and I pull. Oops, easy. I've got this line here. I've got this line here that I just pull it, and it just drags the runner forward like that. So um, I'm sitting on top of it because because the, the camera is in the way. I got my foot on the thing. So uh, normally when you're pulling that, you'll see the runner goes all the way forward and it's out of the way and it's all very cool and it's got a side jammer here. You want to see this jammer? Because this, this is a good thing to copy. You've got a little clam cleat there, a jam, jam cleat rather, and it's got a little guide there. But it means that if you then want to pull the runner back, you just get this line and I throw it over the side or, or uh, I'll just show you. 
This is so simple to do it when you're at sea. Very, very simple to do when you're at sea. Now, when the when it's on the line outside there, if I want to pull the runner in now, and I'll just get up here and uh, pull the pull the runner in. You'll see the the tag line. Look at the tag line down there. It's not getting caught in the jammer because it's it's over the rail there. So it's acting as like a free. So I'm just pulling the runner up now, and that just runs free there, and it's ready to go. So that system works really well. Um, I'd recommend it to everyone. I'll just show you another thing here. This is buddy Pete. This was um, uh, Patrick's deal. You, can you see that? He see Patrick, who helped me in in Lagos, is uh, actually an aircraft uh, engineer, aircraft mechanic. And he know, and I said to him, "Say, hey, I want to seize all my shackles. I've had a couple of planes and helicopters and stuff. And I, and the way he did it was exactly the way they do it in a plane. And there's another one there. So the shackle key, the shackle pins are." Uh, uh, seized, but it's exactly the same as they do it in an aircraft. And Pete, uh, sorry, Patrick did every one bar two shackles because I told him not to worry about them. And both those ones who didn't do came undone during the voyage, <laughs> but everyone else stayed there. And it's really cool, very slick. Thanks, Patrick. Um, okay, so uh, I think uh, one thing I didn't show you with these you've got to have uh, your normal uh, tri color uh, masthead and uh, navigation light, but you also have to have emergency nav lights uh, independent. Uh, and I've got uh, 361 for that and you also have to have deck lights so I've got an Italian brand of deck nav lights here uh, one in each quarter that one's just a starboard light you probably can't see it over in the corner there but uh, this one here is a stern and starboard light okay so that's there uh, can you see that um, probably not okay we've got a camera problem again okay we'll see what happens here uh, we're just trying to sort out a camera problem. Okay, you might not be able to see it there. Anyway, um, that's they're really cool. They're about a hundred euro each, but they they just held on by a hose clip. This one's a, a port light plus a stern light together, and very simple to set up. Very simple to rig. Uh, I think they were developed for all the 650 fleet. They all use them, so I just bought the same thing, and it meets the rule then. So, so uh, that's cool. Uh, the other thing back here, I have my uh, Plastimo external bilge pump in the cockpit down there, so uh, that's pumping out uh, down from down below, and I've got various rope bags there. Uh, the main sheet traveller you absolutely need, you use it uh, all the time, adjustable lines, uh, uh, that's pretty straightforward. And uh, this rope bag here holds all manner of stuff, you know, I found that cool. Same with the rope bags here. That's the, you need to put your tail somewhere because every time you have a problem and the boat gets laid over or something, you've got an issue. Uh, my companionway hatch is an interesting story. Uh, this isn't a Plastimo hatch, okay? I had a Plastimo hatch there and it didn't work um, for mechanical, not for um, human dynamic reasons, I would say. The, um, the Plastimo hatch uh, had uh, arms here and we, we, we broke one when we were building the boat and uh, it just didn't work going through as a companionway hatch. I've got Plastimo everywhere else, but this one I had to swap it out. And I also found that when you're going down here, this hatch is set up at an angle. Uh, you want something to slide on, so it's got a very wide, uh, wide sort of uh, flange on it. You know, it's, it's like that wide. So when I go down, you'll see I, I get in there and I slide down here, so this actually worked better. So, uh, and, and then these are my head bumpers, because I'm hitting, uh, when I first started living on the boat, I'd be hitting my head everywhere. Uh, but this is a, a cool hatch for this because there's no other guides there. So I'll give Jane Jane my microphone and when I go down, even when the, when the, the dodge is back there, it doesn't matter. I, I've got a handhold here. Uh, I come down, just get into here. I've got non-slip here so I can put my hands on. And then you'll slide, you slide your back down that flange and sit on the chair and sit on the seat here. And when you're sitting here, this is my favourite position because if it's if it's really uh, stormy or whatever it is, I can still sit here. If I'm worried about a wave, I can slam the hatch shut really quickly. All right, so that's not a problem either. And um, I'm protected under the dodger. Um, it's just like heaven here. You know, this this whole uh, human dynamic system worked really well. I always prefer to have a hatch because I can seal it 100% for 360 rollover and all that sort of thing. Not for the transat, I mean you've got to be ready for it, it can happen. Uh, but for around the world you absolutely need it. Get around Cape, Cape Town and all that sort of stuff, uh, Southern Ocean. So uh, um, you want something to button the boat up. 
and uh, that's why I prefer a hatch. The beauty of the standard companionway system using the observation pod is it's a lot bigger. But whatever you do, you know, this is the reality. I filled the cockpit here a few times. I filled it, uh, I'd say, probably about five times, okay? Um, you get water in the seats, but the boat's always angling and they drain really quickly. Uh, even when it's here, it's usually on a bit of an angle, but it drains really quickly. Just with the one uh, big hole, the, f the 100 centimeter hole, 100, um, 10 centimetre hole plus the two uh, corner cockpit drains. Mines are a bit bigger than standard. You can never have too small when you want to drain the cockpit, but yes, uh, uh, it happens. Um, once I covered the, uh, the whole boat was covered with water. I was in the cockpit in a big windstorm, which I'll explain later. Uh, there was probably 30 centimetres of water over the whole boat, over the cabin top, everything uh, was full on. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I uh, don't mind this companion way. Um, when I originally designed this, it's meant to be a little bit further out, meant to be a bit further out there, a bit more of an angle. But the beauty of this, the other thing that happens here, I'll just show you, is that you can actually uh, sit here, right? I can sit here on the hatch, it's easy. I can actually stand here and do things. I'm not even outside the hatch. Uh, so you can stand here and do things. Uh, uh, you're still inside, you know, it, it really works well. And this seat in here, if I want to, I can put it out and drop it there and just sit on the seat looking forward. But um, it, it's, it's pretty cool. The other interesting thing, the human dynamics of the boat here is really impressive. I'll just show you this. I'm 1.8 1 centimetres. Um, and uh, uh, you can, hang on to that, you can lie here really easy. Um, okay, even with the main sheet because it's off your bum. You know, you can have a pillow there, no pillow, whatever. You can lay here on full stretch out and it's really comfortable. I'm quite secure. Um, it's not a problem because the main sheet's not on your bum section. You know, it's below your bum section, so it actually works. It's very comfortable. I fell asleep here one night, you know, in the calm, um, and it was really nice. Big stars everywhere. Oh, and I had a, I, yeah, anyway, I had a big meteor storm, which is the best night. I had a meteor storm the night before I arrived, and I was out in the cockpit after a big squall. There was very little wind, no clouds. Went, I was out for like 35 minutes. There was a meet. There was sometimes there was three meteors every minute, which is shong shong shong. It's unbelievable. Anyway, so uh, that's really cool. I like this little overhang here in the cockpit. Uh, off the top there because it brings gear back a bit further the, the winches are mounted outside and all the other bits there But it just gives this stuff gives the vents a little bit more protection um, And it just feels right. It looks right too, you know, so uh, I prefer that rather than having the, the Having the the backrest there going all the way up. So don't despair if you think oh, I'm not gonna put this because you can't sit there and lay back I can sit here quite comfortably You know what I mean because even with me my shoulder and my back planes are underneath that point, all right? So it's, it's not a problem, you know, um, it actually works well. And these side decks, some people initially were going to copy some of the set because and put an angle on here on the seats. Don't do it. You'll regret it because the seat is exactly what you need now to lay down and sit comfortably on the seat. Just having a normal round is perfect, you know. And when you're, when you're steering, most of the time I'm on this side of the, of the, of the cockpit. So I'm actually, in fact, I'll show you. I'll get that out of the way. Show because I've got my dodger up. The dodger was up probably 70% of the time during the trip. Okay, so I'm actually sitting here and my feet brace the other side of the cockpit perfectly. Oh, you don't have to show my feet, they're ugly. Um, so, you know, you've got, I've got my feet braced there. The, thing, the only thing is a bit boring sometimes this is in your back all the time, you know. So you sit here for a while and so I'd be steering like that if I steer. I had a longer session, I had eight hours here. It didn't, virtually didn't move for eight hours, you know. Even pee in a pee bottle and then over the side rather than off the back. I think I've explained that before. Um, so that works well. And then the other one is when you're up here, you know, you then sit up here. Uh, it's cool, you're, you're helming along, you know. That, that's cool. And then the other one, when the wind vane or the uh, pilot steering, the boat is weight sensitive. You need to be remember that. It's only a small boat. So if you want performance, you're always thinking where the weight is. Uh, so I'm actually then sitting up in here like this. Um, and this is about as far as there was only one occasion where I actually got up and sat out sort of thing because it was a nice day and it was just a bit of a giggle. But this is as far forward as I'll sit when I'm actually uh, looking for performance, you know, and the boat steering itself and so on. Um, and the dodger was here, so sometimes I'd hide from the sun 
I'd be on that side as the sun's setting and the dodge would give me some sun protection on my legs. I made one big boo-boo in this race. I forgot to bring long sleeve shirts. Uh, in previous expeditions, I bring lightweight expedition shirts for the sun. And this time I completely forgot. And so my, my arms got fried. I only had t-shirts. It was unbelievable. I was putting towels over my arms and legs and stuff like that. So that was a bit boring. But yeah, weight is a consideration because if you go back there, Jang Jang, we, um, even when I'd, at the night time I'd come down and I said I'd adjusting the, the solar panels, if you move from that side to this side and start playing with that, it can upset the apple cart and the wind vane all of a sudden might start to screw around. Certainly when you go forward, uh, weight on the bow, the bow digs in and it slews around and lots of stuff. So, so yeah, you've got to watch your weight. And anyone that says, oh, I'm going to sleep on the floor in the boat, uh, on the cabin sole, because you can't fall out, it's not fast, believe me. You need to be on the windward side, so you need to sleep in your bunks with a lee cloth. But we'll explain that in a minute. Um, so yeah, so just, uh, I used to sit out, you know, if I wasn't, if I was downhill, I'd often sit on this rail. If I was uh, downhill on attack, you know, then I would be in, the, sit in the quarters here, you know, or, but I was usually sitting at the back, so that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so uh, where are we at now? We've uh, done the runners, we've done bits. Oh, I didn't, I always keep forgetting the, um, when I'm talking equipment back here about the Echo Max. The Echo Max is really uh, a cool piece of kit. What this is, is a uh, radar detector and a uh, radar transponder. So any radar beam that hits the boat, it's going to hit this, this aerial and it sets off an alarm down below. So I'll know straight away that there's a ship out there. You can adjust the sensitivity and I, this, I turned it on you know, in the first few days and I adjusted it. It was hard to say where the boats were so I put it on the finest one because it kept going off all the time. With the finest one it stopped and so it should be down around sort of four or five miles at that one. And um, uh, anyway, so yes, you know when there's a ship out there. You don't know where it is, but you just know there's one out so you can come out. The other one is that it does, and this is the important one, if you need to have a big signal, so you look actually like you're a, um, look like you're a 100 foot steel fishing boat, okay, that's what this does. Instead of being a 19 foot plywood boat, when a radar beam hits this, it detects that and it amplifies the return signal by a huge amount of times and sends it back to the ship. So when that ship is seeing your signal, he thinks you're really big. Okay, that's, this is what it's all about. It's a transponder that's bouncing the signal back big time and uh, you will have a huge echo signature, a huge signature on their screen so you stand out like dog's balls. And uh, this is only uh, voluntary at the moment. It's mandatory for the, um, for the uh, mini globe race. So everyone's going to have to get that. Uh, the guy, John there at Echo Max, he's cut us a deal. So it's getting a reasonable sort of a discount. But it will be mandatory and they're not cheap. I think they're about 1,000 euro or something. So, uh, so uh, but I, I wanted mine. Uh, uh, I had it on a few times, but generally I leave it off if it's beautiful day, beautiful nights, things like that. It's for when you're in a dicky situation, you know, high traffic, low visibility, things like that. That's when I put it on because power is a consideration which we'll talk about on another issue. You want to save power wherever you can. Um, so, yeah, so the Echo Max is really uh, very important. Um, okay, uh, well, while we're talking about that, we also have the MIDI uh, uh, radar de reflector on the mast, which is the big orange, uh, orange thing. We won't worry about it now. We'll, we'll show it after. Um, you've seen it on all the pictures. It's uh, orange, it's about this big, it's about that round. And uh, I've always, I'm a great believer of Echo Max. Um, it's up, uh, I did any, uh, okay, go on, show them. Jane Jane wants to show you the Echo Max. Uh, now stuffing up the gyro on the uh, gimbal because you shouldn't hold it like that. <laughs> She's going to give me the finger in a minute because that's what stuffs it up. Now let it go, let it go. Okay, um, that's it up there. So it was going to be mandatory for the uh, mini globe race and voluntary, all the rest of it, but I've changed my mind. The reason I've changed my mind is because I asked a few ships about the power of the, you know, in this leg, so it has my radar signal based on that reflector and they gave positive results. And there's an interesting story there, but the reality is that uh, I asked John to develop one for the 580, he did that two stack. The two stack gives a huge reflection, more so than the three stack. So uh, that's now gonna be mandatory for class approval. So it uh, doesn't matter what you do with the 580, if you want class approval, you're gonna have to get one of the MIDI radar reflectors. They're about 90 pounds or something, and uh, I'm a big fan of them, and uh, being hit by a ship, we don't want anyone on 580 hit by a ship. Uh, I'm not a fan of the, the tube reflectors. Basically every test they've ever done on them, they don't work. Uh, they're a rule beater, people don't install them right, all the rest of it. We've allowed an octahedral up to now, but uh, even that interacts badly with the mainsail. You know, Etienne put an octahedral up and he hated it because 
every time you're running downwind with the main is chafing the main and all that stuff so that's it you're all going to have to have uh, 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 one of the echo max middies uh, for the for the 580 um, and I don't I don't you know I know it's a pain you know saying you must do this but believe me when it comes to safety uh, there's no second guessing you know I always hear on the side of caution and uh, uh, they don't sponsor us they don't give us any money anything like that they cut us a discount deal and and I just like it and I think it's very important we all want to return home um, okay uh, the other thing I don't have uh, cockpit locker lids here I'm quite okay with that originally I was going to have the usual lids here but I thought they're going to leak anyway and uh, there's a bit of a long story how it ended up Pitor cut a hole through the bulkheads back there and I said cover them up and sent the hatches and he didn't want to do it he wanted to put it there and in the end I've learned to live with it and I kind of like it because uh, you know those hatches the you know you don't want water getting down there and I didn't want any real weight on the back of the boat anyway so uh, the only things I put in my aft compartment was uh, my fenders and that 100 meter line in the bag there that was up against the bulkhead so I could open the hatch and pull it out if I needed it and that was all I put in the back locker because I didn't want too much weight back here um, so uh, okay I think that's um, I think that's about it for this session how long have we got there now yeah, Jen Jen 25 yeah okay so we'll can that there and uh, I'll see you again shortly and we'll be going down below and have a look down below